Not only would the Gorman Ridge Rally be another entirely new rally for us, but it would be a return to the valley where Mike and I learned to ride dirt bikes as kids. We both learned to ride on this little Suzuki JR50. Amazingly, Gorman looks much the same as it did back in the mid-80s when our parents were teaching us to ride. What you see here are two little devils transformed. <laughs> Take a good look. You don't see this too often. Some of my best memories growing up are riding dirt bikes with my parents. And we continued to ride here throughout the 90s. It was this love for dirt biking that would eventually lead to our crazy adventures in rally cars. And now the car has led us back to Gorman nearly two decades later. Right at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, we decided to drive overnight because the drive is so long. We wanted to get into town at a reasonable time. Uh, so it's starting to rain here and we'll see how the drive goes. What do you think, Mike? You ready for Gorham? Oh yeah, can't wait to see it again and see what it's turned into last time we were out there riding dirt bikes. Yeah, we couldn't quite make it through the night. We both kind of petered out about four or so in the morning and uh, ended out having to sleep in the truck in St. George, Utah. I uh, got a few hours, had some breakfast, and we're rolling again. And uh, it's beautiful out here. Looking forward to getting to California. Once you see Las Vegas approaching in the distance, you know you're not far from the California border. One of the best part of this rally for us was getting to see some friends we hadn't seen in a long time. Not only that, but we'd meet him at my favorite restaurant in the whole world. We had a great time, and our friends were so gracious to let us stay with them. We couldn't hang out for long, though, because the next day was recce day. Seeing Gorman again for the first time in what seemed like forever was a real blast from the past, but at the same time, it felt like we were just here. My rally friend Kareem saw that we were signed up for Gorman, and since he was also signed up to be a volunteer ham operator for the race, he offered to let us use his car for recce. Not only is this his daily driver, but it's also the vehicle he races rallycross in, and we were extremely grateful to get to use it, rather than having to use our big old truck to bump down the stages. At the beginning of the series, I had no intentions of racing this race, but after racing Idaho and Colorado, and seeing how nice and well-organized the California Rally Series folks were, I couldn't help but want to race this race. Not only that, but a win here would lock up the California Rally Series Open Lights Championship. All right, Mike, pre-race thoughts. Hope well, I can keep my voice all day. Been a little under the weather, caught it from my brother on the way out. But uh, looking forward to these roads. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be quick. But uh, looking forward to it. Unlike most of my rallies, the Gorman Rally happens entirely in one day, which adds a certain endurance factor to the race. 30 seconds. We'd start stage one as the lead car, and we'd be sweeping all the loose stuff off the road. Let's do it. Most of the year, these roads only see traffic from motorcycles, UTVs, and the occasional Jeep. Five, four, three, two, one, go. 50, left six, tightens five minus. Into right four minus long, pass tree, opens long. Into bump, into left four minus, extra long. One thing Gorman is known for are these water bars. A water bar is just a big bump that allows the water to run off the side of the road on a steep downhill. If you're going downhill, the bumps can be really aggressive. On the uphill, they're just big smooth jumps. 40 down, left five short to the finish. It's a right three long. Pretty loose. Oh, loose, narrow. 
I'm sorry? Loose and narrow. Ah, you had a couple little uh, woos while you were out there? No, not too bad. Oh, good. Nice and clean. We just well, knock the mirrors off every time we hit bushes. Oh, you want to back up? No, just leave them. Okay. Yeah, you don't look behind you anyway, right? <laughs> nope. Well, have fun, be safe. Thanks. Go real fast. Jeez, those jumps were getting out of control. Yeah. I think that was a solid start. It wasn't as, you weren't pushing it hard. I don't know, it felt, uh, felt pretty fast to me. <laughs> it's just so loose and yeah. so narrow, there's just no room to do anything. Take your pick, we have 350, so it's just a drag strip. Stage two would take us out of the rolling hills and take us down into the slope valley floors. Here we'd see washes with more sand and gravel, so my driving style had to change, and I had to be really quick on the wheel. What's at the end of this thing? Left five short into long dip, into right four very long, it's that weird one. Yeah, I got it. 30 seconds. Three, two, one, go. 350. After the long start stretch, we'd get into some of the wildest driving I've done yet. Next, left five short into long dip, into right four very long, into left five minus opens long over bumps, into right four, kinks 80 over bumps, left five short, 20, right five short is 80 over two bumps, left five plus short is in the bump, 30, left four, into small bump, into left four long, into right four minus long opens, through intersection 40, left four plus, left four, after climbing the valley floor to the base of the mountains, the road would loop back down for a high-speed run to the finish. Okay. 50, bump okay into narrow left by minus into bump okay. 90 over two bumps okay. Right six plus into bump okay. Into left six shortish into right five. Into left five plus long, kink 140. Right six in the small bump, okay, count. Right five shortish, 70. Kink into right five, 80. Right six short, into left five, tightens four plus. Left five plus short, 100. Left five plus short, 30. Left five shortish, into right four over finish. TVs aren't allowed on the main road, but because it's an off-road park, there's plenty of side roads to get to the next stage. Ten. Stages three and four would be a repeat of those stages, only this time we wouldn't Five, be clearing out all the loose four, stuff. Three, two, one, go. Fifty. Left six tightens five minus. The kicks over bump pass road on right into left three plus late. Into crest right four minus. 40, right 5 over small crest, and a left 4 shortish over crest, into right 4, opens a tightness 3, 50, left 2, left 5 minus shortish, and a right 3 plus, into left 3 plus, 40 down, left 5 short, into finish, into right 3 long, into left 5 minus opens, it's more like Dave Brown driving there. <laughs> Took 12 seconds off. It's faster. It's not as loose. Bush. Yep. So we can go to pits and do a splash if you want and check tire pressure. Is that what you're thinking? Yes. 
One of the unique features of this rally is anytime the transit road goes by the pits, you're allowed to stop. You don't get any extra time, but it's nice to have the option, especially if you're starting to run low on fuel. Because most of the transiting is on the main road in the valley, it's nice to get to see all the other rally cars heading out to stage. There was only one more stage before an official pit stop, so we'd throw in a splash of gas and check the tire pressures. Amazing how much work goes into driving these cars, even on a long straightaway. Another quick rip around the stage and we'd be done with the first loop of stages. first official pit stop would be a short one, so we'd quickly finish fueling up, and then we'd go over the car and make sure it was ready to go out for the next loop. Three, two, one, go. Right four plus. Even though this loop is the same roads, they're entirely different when you drive them in a different direction. 30, right six short, 120. Thanks to Esteban Carrillo, here's what the fans saw. This time we'd be heading downhill on the long straightaway, so I had to slam on the brakes before every water bar to make sure I wasn't carrying too much speed that would damage the car. 20. Into left six through junction, Titans four minus. Into right four minus. Small bump, left four plus, opens in Titans four. Into bump at 60, right four. Bump into right five plus. 350. Jeez. Back and neck are gonna get a workout. Yeah, those bumps have moved my mic down. Yeah. It's crazy. 80.2 miles per hour. If it wasn't for those bumps being so nasty, you'd hit 100 on that straight. Yeah. Besides getting a nice long stop to go over the car thoroughly, the Gorman rally organizers put together a nice barbecue for us. 
After lunch, it was time for two more loops of stages in an entirely different part of the park. We were heading up into the mountains. Although we were the fastest rally car for all of the morning stages, there was one UTV that was faster than we were, so he'd get to go first on the second half of the day. The good thing is we'd have at least one car to partially sweep off the road for us. Because we were carrying a big lean, we would take no risks through the initial rocky section. Coming onto this straightaway, I could see tons of photographers on the ridge out by the big jump, but there was no way I was taking that bait. Tons of photographers usually means they're hoping for some carnage. And every year, it seems there's someone willing to give it to them. This UTV would completely tear out one of his strut towers and his race would be over. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was just like, I'm not going to record this. Yeah, I saw a couple wild skids. Since this was the first time Stefan Verdier had to be first on the road, he came to tell me how much more crazy loose it was in the lead. I knew what I called And I could only chuckle because that's how it had been for me all morning. Out and back stages are really fun, but it means waiting for everyone to complete the stage, plus the zero car has to clear it before we can go in the other direction. With the sun low in the sky, it meant we had the challenge of driving with the sun in our eyes, but it also meant that the fun night stages were coming. hit the jump a little faster than I'd hoped. section and we are done with this loop. Time for a short pit stop and to install the light bars. This is the first time I've been able to use these diode dynamic stage series light bars and these quick release motorsports mounts. It's really amazing how quickly I can install these things. Time to test how secure they are on some of the roughest roads I've raced on. These stages started out on the same road, but about halfway through, they split off and went a totally different direction. The roads got faster and more flowy. The motorsports mounts were rock solid and didn't budge a bit. I couldn't wait to try these lights out at night. By the time the last car was finishing the stage, it was already starting to get dark. Alright Mike, what's going on? We are sitting at uh, the turnaround between stage 11 and 12. Uh, just the uh, stage is out and back, so we're just waiting for zero car to go and clear the stage. Then we'll be uh, hot and ready to go. And as you can see, it's getting really dark. Looking forward to trying these new lights and uh, seeing what we can do. Just gotta make it to the finish. Wrap it up. Three, two, one, go. Left five, 80. Left six minus over crest. 100 over bumps. Left three plus very long. 50. Right five short over crest over bumps. Okay. 80. Right four minus. Into left one plus long up. Thank <laughs> you. 
into right three plus. Left two plus, into right two plus. I was amazed at how bright these diode dynamic lights were. Made it so I could see the road ahead perfectly, and it even lit up stuff way off in the distance. Five, Titans three, pass road on right. Luckily, my friends were able to come catch some racing during the night stage. Lights even stood up to the first set of high-speed whoops I've ever been through in a rally car. 60 over whoops. Dip 80. Left 6 into skew bump. Into right 4 plus Titans over rocks. Into left 3 plus. Bump. Into left 3 minus. 100. the finish of the night stage, we were the fastest rally car on every single stage of the rally. All we had to do was get it back to the final checkpoint. Well, at least I saw Steve. He was on the fence, waving us on. Yeah. I saw nothing. Yeah. It's probably a good thing. <laughs> I knew there was a straightaway coming, so I was able to put my eyes up and watch a bit. Yeah. Well, Mike, another good one. Another win for Mrs. Brown's boys. <laughs> <All right. laughs> we just made it to the finish here and uh, it was a night stage uh, to come in in the pitch black. There's not even a moon out. Uh, we finished the whole race and uh, we crewed ourselves and uh, we now have an even better appreciation for how much our crew does. And so everyone that's crewed for us in the past, uh, we really appreciate you and thank you. And uh, yeah, we're excited to be here and uh, we have to see the official results, but I think we're the uh, first place rally car, huh? I believe so. Anything else to say? That's about it. <laughs> excited to be here? Very excited. Yep. It's a good time. Yeah. Normally all the winners spraying champagne would be the end of the adventure, but ours was about to get more exciting. At 2 a.m. when we were nearly to our friend's house, one of the trailer hubs exploded. The wheel went flying off, bounced off the side of the trailer, hit the running board of the truck, and then we saw the most spectacular spark show flying down the road. When we checked it out the next day, we weren't able to fix it, so my friend arranged for us to be able to store the truck, trailer, and race car while I flew home and figured out where to get parts to fix it. Unless you want a more personal inspection from TSA, Mike would suggest that you don't let your wife convince you to smuggle home a scented candle. Two weeks later, I'd be enjoying the views on a flight back to California. I found a local trailer shop that could get me back on the road in one day. Plus, I got to enjoy more Mexican food with my friends. Finally on my way home at 6.30, and I've been driving for two and a half hours so far. Got the trailer fixed yesterday, and I'm glad to have everything loaded up. Get the truck, trailer, and race car back home and where it belongs. Awesome, I'm here on the outskirts of Las Vegas, just uh, filling up for the first time. And, uh, there's F-35s or F-22s, hard to tell from here, flying around, uh, so uh, pretty cool. Plus I got to see this guy in Beaver, Utah when I stopped for fuel. 18 hours later and I'm finally home. Trailers dropped off and I cannot wait to get to bed. Uh, 18 and a half hours in one seat without moving is way too long. Uh, but we got it done, everything's home, and uh, ready for the next adventure. A few months later, Mike and I would be back out in California, where not only would we get some in and out, but we'd be going to the California Rally Series Awards Banquet. There, Mike and I would pick up these awesome awards for winning the California Rally Series Open Lights Championship. 
Not only were we the CRS champions, but later we would find out that we were the American Rally Association West Coast overall champions as well. This turned out to be a great season and exceeded all of my expectations. Mike and I would like to say a huge thanks to our friends Brenda and Steve for their amazing hospitality while we were out there. Despite the unexpected trailer issues, we had a great time and really appreciate all the time we were able to spend with our friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you out at the races. Yeah.